Good evening and good morning. Welcome to Tencent Music Entertainment Group's fourth quarter and full year 2022 earnings webinar. TME announced quarterly financial results today after market close. An earnings release is now available on our IR website at ir.tencentmusic.com, as well as via Newswire services. Today, you hear from Mr. Kushan Pang, our executive chairman, who will start the call with an overview of our recent updates. Next, Mr. Ross Liang, our CEO, and I, Tony Yip, a CSO, will offer additional thoughts on our product strategies, operations, and business developments. Finally, Ms. Shirley Hu, our CFO, will address our financial results before we open the call for questions. Before we continue, I refer you to our safe harbor statement in our earnings press release which applies to this call as we will make forward-looking statements. Please also note that the company will discuss non-IFRS measures today, which are more thoroughly explained and reconciled to the most comparable measures reported under IFRS in the company's earnings release and filings with the SEC. At this time, all participants are muted. After the management's presentation, there will be a Q&A session. For participants who have dialed in by phone, please press 5 to ask a question. If you are accessing the call from the Tencent meeting or VOOF meeting application, please click the raise hand button at the bottom left. And please be advised that today's webinar is being recorded. With that, I'm pleased to turn the call over to Kushan, Executive Chairman of TME. Kushan. Thank you, Tony. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our call today. Looking back on 2022, firm execution of our dual engine content and platform strategy built a solid progress in a fast changing macro environment. With a keen focus on high quality growth and product innovation, as well as our highly effective cost optimization measures, we led the industry in the rebound of bottom line growth and delivered steady growth in online music subscriptions throughout the year. Our diversified suite of monetization tools expanded and made progress during the years such as ad support mode, long form audio, as well as audio live streaming and our international expansion, among many more. With our confidence in the long-term prospects of the company, we had completed the US dollar 1 billion shares buyback program approved by the board in 2021. Looking ahead into 2023, as we are repositioning ourselves to better capture future growth areas. We currently expect our quarterly revenues from online music services will exceed those from social entertainment services at some point within this year. Meanwhile, with our relentless focus on executing our growth strategies and operating efficiencies, we are confident to achieve year-over-year -year growth in total revenues and profitability, as well as continuous improvement in user quality in 2023 while fueling the thriving music industry. Next, I would like to talk about remarkable achievements we have made in many aspects of our businesses built upon our insistence on excellencies and innovation. One integral part of our strategy in 2022 was to continue improving TME's content ecosystem. First, we are building extensive collaboration with top artists, labels, and industry partners, both at home and abroad to bring our users and artists most compelling content and experiences. We have recently reached an agreement with JVR to extend our close strategic partnership and will continue to provide our users with the high quality music created by JDR. Accentuated by the extraordinary experience on our platform, in the fourth quarter, we deepened our strategic cooperation with leading records such as Bean Music, Sansing Yin Yuan, providing users with songs from May Day, Wu Yue Tian, and other renowned singers. Our flourishing library in various music verticals also reinforced our reputation as a go-to destination for music lovers. Importantly, we began extensively teaming up with Billboard, the industry bellwether, 
In addition to co-produce the playlist, we jointly released the 2022 Annual Music Report, which attracted participation from a record high number of unique visitors. Most recently, we announced the integration of TME Unichart, Tangxun Yingyue Liao Li Bang, on Billboard as its only music chart for mainland China, introducing Chinese music to a global audience. Second, as we strove to increase the breadth and depth diversity of our music library, our ability to empower original content production has significantly improved with new tools launched. We have been investing in intellect, intelligent tools to support music-related content production with technology, and has delivered promising results with virtualization setting the trend. One strategic move in 2022 was to build a lineup of virtual performers. In the fourth quarter, we unveiled our first hyperreal virtual pop idol, Lucy, Lu Xiaoxi, who is also the whole music presenters for today's call. With a record grade, automatically generated vocal print developed by TME Naira Labs Naira Singing Engine, Tenqin Xi Yan Shi de Qing Yun Ying Qing, Lucy, as a highly productive singer, has created three chart dominating original songs across different styles within just one month of her debut and has already received the partnership interest for fashion shots or joint performances from a broad array of global brands including Elle, Coca-Cola, and KFC. At the forefront for cutting-edge virtual idol field, our virtual performance also include Xiaoqing, Sanba, and Anke, who we brought to life with original content, unique voices, dance movers, and more. Musicians are also increasingly foraging on our Tencent Music platform, driving content prosperity both on our platform and in the industry. By the end of fourth quarter, we have empowered our indie musicians to create more than 2.3 million musical works. Meanwhile, we consistently pay close attention to music ecosystem development. In the fourth quarter, we launched more smart features and tools for indie musicians to accelerate song composition and release, and foster deeper interactions with their fans. For example, in December, we unveiled a record release feature, Yuan Chuang Zhuan Ji Jia Kai Tong Zhang Xiang Fa Xing Mo Shi, which allows indie musicians to upload their in original albums and earn revenue from listeners who want to show extra gratitude in addition to album sales. What's more, the tech tools we launched during the quarter enable our musicians to generate lyrics and album covers automatically as well as assist in singing, enhancement, and song evaluation, all of which help form a modularized and automated music production process. We are proud that our end-to-end -end services have been instrumental in realizing a year of harvest for the creation of close to 1,000 original blockbusters, leading the streams exceeding 100 million each in 2022. In the fourth quarter, the hit song, Grant Me, Shi Wo, dominated trending list on our platform and took the market by storm, ranking in nearly half a billion streams. Another hit was Turn Into Fireworks and Fall For You, Hua Zuo Yan Huo, Wei Ni Zui Luo, which has been extensively used as background music and generated over 5 billion social media discussions. Meanwhile, we deepened our collaboration with the Tencent ecosystem and launched a total of 111 songs in the gaming and animation category in 2022. A number of our co-produced songs have garnered awards this year. Notably, Fairy Tale Love, Cindy Lang Make for Peacemaker Elite, He Ping Jing Ying, was among the finalists for the best original songs in the mobile video game category of the 13th Hollywood Music in Media Awards, 第十三届好莱坞传美音乐奖. But behind this high-quality musical work, more up-and-coming artists 
are founding opportunities and stages to shine and realize their music dreams on the back of TME's all-round promotional resources. One example in the fourth quarter was the strategic musician's partner we cultivate, Chris Chen, Chen Zhuoxuan. We invited well-known producers to launch her first EP from which the song Skylight, Ken Chuang, topped the QQ Music's best new release music chart, helping her build her profile as a high-quality singer. Another standout fan was the campus musician Pan Yuqi, who was featured on the cover of Billboard's December issue with her first single, Let Us Alive, Jian Ju Ru Mian, and also came in the third place in 2022 Sing China, Erling Er Er, Zhongguo Hao Sheng Ying, with our coaching. In addition, we collaborated with Coca-Cola to create a large-scale New Year Eve music event and promoted emerging musicians such as Pan Yuqi to the world stage through Billboard's global network. Many newly joined musicians have grown quickly into rising stars with our support, representing just a few of our success stories among a strong pipeline of emerging talents we are grooming to build the thriving music industry. That concludes my review of our growing content strategy. Now I would like to turn the call over to Ross, who will share more about our platform updates. Ross, please go ahead. Thank you, Carson. Hello, everyone. With our refined mission in 2022 to create endless possibilities with music and technology, 2022 was a year of our continued exploration of, for TME with stepped up creative efforts to satisfy our users' nuanced and diverse music tastes and to provide all-around musical companionship to our users through each of our four entertainment pillars, listen, watch, sing, and play. <clears throat> we have been deploying and developing breakthrough AIGC tools to further import music-related content creation and enhance production efficiency. In addition to the Lyrae singing engine, which we used to develop our virtual idols, such, such as Cushion mentioned, we rolled out the Muse engine in the fourth quarter, which enables automatic large-scale music posters production based on melody and uh, lyrics. We have also expanded use, use cases for our patented technology, Linying Yinqing, to launch several popular audiobooks read by the synthetic voice of Yang Chaoyue, including the Grey Roberts Chronicles, Dao Mu Biji. What's more, ahead of the new, new year, receivers of QQ Music's newly launched VR greeting card can work into the gift generated automatically and receive blessings as avatars in an exquisite virtual space. In the future, we will continue to explore the application of large language models in the field of speaker, pictures, texts, video, and other content, as well as music recommendation and search to meet the massive demand for music-related content. Next, one of the biggest advancements in the year was to holistically improve our sound quality and sound effects and bring users a clear and more vivid listening experience, which also contributes to the growth of music subs subscription as well as we are adding this companion privilege to our memberships. For, for example, Nearly half of our QQ music music tracks now support super quality or above, and the over high rise standard has also been upgraded to high rise loose rise, high rise wu sun yin zhi, which uh, parallels the top tier studio quality for a mass mass resolution of 192 kilohertz, 24 bit. Second, we continue to optimize our preparatory technology for the premium sound series, launching premium master type Zhenpin Mudai, premium surround sound Zhenpin Quan Ming Quan Ning Sheng, and the premium sound quality 
two zero 真品音质二点零 to enhance sound clarity and expressiveness. We also extended the application of this premium sound quality features to TME Live's online concert, Jazai Richie Sakamoto's concert, as we concentrated on building a new benchmark in sound quality for the domestic streaming industry. More users are opting for songs with high sound quality. On QQ Music, the number exceeded 5 million on a daily base, totally nearly 100 million daily streams. We also launched and enhanced a number of features to allow users to flexibly customize their listening experience. Google Music and QQ Music all unveiled a pitch and tempo alteration feature, 变道变速, with which users can remark the, their favorite songs. Our algorithms upgraded also contributed to a more personalized listening experience, leading to sustained healthy year-over-year -year growth in QQ Music and Google Music's recommendation streaming volumes and time spent per user in the fourth quarter. Specifically, QQ Music's recommendation inspired more listening behavior than searches, which continues increase in the percentage of streams coming from our recommendation. Another focus in 2022 was to enrich users' virtual experiences on our platforms, particularly through comprehensive collaboration with Weixin video accounts in the Tencent ecosystem. First, through TME Live, our performance brand, which hosted 63 online and offline events throughout 2022, we held hands with Weixin video accounts to innovate in the active formats and build new avenues to distribute music and video content. For, for instance, at Hanken Lee Li Keqin's concert, nearly 20,000 users cast their votes on either our platform or Weixin video accounts to select the final anchor. We also joined attractive over 23,000 paying viewers to watch the eminent Japanese pianist Richie Sakamoto Banben Long Yi's solo concert, which is the highest number to date among TME Live's musical instrument performance. Second, we further applied our song recognition feature to automatically identify the background music of videos from Weixin video accounts and direct users to QQ Music to listen, set their Weixin ringtone or use in their own videos. What's more, by the end of 2022, over 60,000 Indian musicians on our Tencent Musician platform have used the one-click release feature to publish their original songs on Weixin video accounts. Beyond professional music content, during the fourth quarter, we also promoted youth engagement by allowing our Weixin users to share music videos of their own singing on Weixin video accounts. The hit song on Weixin video accounts, Good Morning, Lun Hui, Zao An Lun Hui, racked up nearly 100 million music streams on TME's platforms in the fourth quarter, a stronger testament to the vibrancy of our joint built music ecosystem with virtual elements. The singing features have also been upgraded to create more enjoyable experiences for our karaoke users. In the fourth quarter, we rolled out several real-time features, namely the one-player model, Singing Master, Yan Chang Da Shi, two-player model, Karaoke King 2.0, Tiger Wang Zhe 2.0, and the multi-play model, Mike Ram, Quan Ming Qiang, Qiang Mai, to install users with the excitement of simultaneous singing and competition. On top of these new entertainment choices, during the fourth quarter, we also con continued to engage within users with the singing effect update, updates, such as the vocal enhancement, 人声增强 feature, 
for visiting VIP users to create a studio quality acoustic immersive singing environment. Music lovers, particularly the young ones, are getting attracted by our music music based virtual use, use cases at TME Land or immersive virtual theme park. 8 million users in their avatars joined Coca Cola and KFC's virtual parties and celebrate a super new year alongside artists during the fourth quarter. We also released VR Listening Together, VR Yixi Ting Xiang Wo on TME Land, which brings users' avatars together to listen to content in virtual scenarios such as camping. Rooftop charts and a New Year celebration. Lastly, to to incubate a vibrant, young and trendy culture community, we upgraded Kugo concept, Kugo Ganyanban, and the Bodian music, Bodian Yue. Two of our music products designed for Gen Z users. During the fourth quarter, these updates include one include more real time interactive features to help the young generation identify people with shared music taste and encourage them to actively create, share, and socialize. Thanks to the Gen Z warm receptions and the adoption of their diverse functions, these two apps both tri triple their MAUs year over year. With that, I'd like to give the floor to Tony to review our business operations. Tony, please go ahead. Thank you, Ross. Hello, everyone. During the fourth quarter, the surge in COVID cases and churn of our casual users amid competition led to the year-over-year -year decline in online music mobile MAUs. Along with cost optimization measures aimed at boosting monetization efficiency as a platform of scale. Meanwhile, we continue to strengthen our monetization capabilities with improved operating efficiency and have achieved high quality growth in both subscription and non-subscription revenue during the fourth quarter. Most excitingly, our subscription revenue de delivered healthy growth year over year and quarter over quarter. Reflecting our balanced approach, online music paying users, a high quality user cohort, maintained a strong growth trend and ARPPU also continue to improve sequentially for the third consecutive quarter and increased year over year. The strong paying user and ARPPU momentum was driven by our improved operating strategy, leading to optimized content quality, more attractive member privileges, broadened sales channels, and more effective promotions. Subscribers to our super VIP membership, Cao Ji Huiyuan, continue to grow during the fourth quarter as we expanded our offerings to provide premium sound quality and premium master tape and added a wealth of privileges such as long form audio, digital album and karaoke to the membership package. On the non-subscription side, its revenue also improved year over year and quarter over quarter during the fourth quarter. Revenues from our advertising business continue to recover quarter over quarter, specifically Ad supported mode delivered strong performance during the quarter with sequential growth in its revenues. Through our music with brands partnership, leading advertisers, including Wuliangchun, Coca Cola, KFC, and JD.com, embraced TME Live and TME Land as innovative channels for musical format advertising in the fourth quarter, particularly given their appeal to young users. On the merchandising side, we worked with a wide range of A-list artists, including Lu Han, Lin Junjie, Wang Jiaer, Wang Yibo, Wang Yuan, Xue Zichen, Zhang Yixing this, this quarter, to release their physical albums, digital albums, vinyl records, or customized artist merchandise with head start benefits. Moreover, during the fourth quarter, we launched artist collection cards a new series of photo cards as collectibles in Putao Mall. We commenced, in, we commenced the rollout with Kiku, Ju Jingyi, 
card, which became highly sought after among young users, demonstrating our end-to-end -end content release advantage, spanning Head Start benefits, artist-related products, and multi-channel promotion. Moreover, we have strengthened our long-form audio content offerings with more audio books based on novel IPs and self-produced paid children's literature. Subscribers doubled year over year to surpass 10 million during the fourth quarter, driving solid year over year growth of revenues from long form audio subscription. Our IoT service MAUs achieved double digit growth year over year, thanks to our expanded model coverage, as well as a diversified content library with Dolby Surround Sound Library and TME Live Content added respectively on selective electric vehicle and smart TV terminals. Moving on to our social entertainment services, during the fourth quarter, as a result of macro headwinds, increased competition from other platforms and the surge in COVID cases, social entertainment services, MAUs and paying users declined year over year. Against this backdrop, we will focus on product innovation and content differentiation while exploring fresh ways to fulfill users' social and entertainment needs. For We Sing, its multi-person singing room in both video and audio settings have continued to enrich real-time interaction scenarios on the platform, resulting in increased penetration rate and user time spent in these rooms. And we are planning to roll out the feature to our other platforms in the future. Meanwhile, we took the operation experience from our singing and social products and our proven monetization models to the international market, expanding our presence through both organic growth and M&A. Revenues from our overseas business continue to increase year over year in the fourth quarter. For live streaming services, though macro environment continue to wait on our revenues from traditional video live streaming, we focus on providing differentiated content and entertainment experiences to explore new value generators. Specifically, we are fostering a tighter connection between audio live streaming and our music platforms. Following the successful expansion into live streaming by QQ Music, Google Music has also started to build up its audio live streaming service, which has a huge growth potential given its massive music user base. What's more, Leveraging our ex expertise in cultivating rising talents, we are creating more room for our indie musicians to grow into promising live streaming performers. For instance, in the fourth quarter, our self-produced hit songs like the puppetry, Mu Xi, and Echo, Hui Ying, helped their singers grow the number of fans substantially, thereby increasing both copyright revenue and live streaming income. Another example is our musician, Li Wai. His original song, Worthless Relationship, Guanxi, has attracted high streaming volume and landed a spot on many of our music charts. As we are building a bridge between performers and their fan bases, revenues from audio live streaming increase by double digits year over year with solid growth in paying users and ARPPU year over year. Last but not least, during 2022, we continue to fulfill our social responsibilities with an innovative model to translate music's emotional expression and influence into social practices. The spirit of Chinese song, Zhongguo Yun, our core cultural project, is now in its fourth year. In the fourth quarter, it launched an initiative for the Guangxi music style and partnered with singers Hu Xia and Liu Yuxin to promote Chinese traditional culture through the power of digital music. In December 2022, many of the musical works from the Spirits of Chinese Song 2020, a public welfare album we released previously, officially entered the first digital collection of the National Archives of Publication and Culture, supporting the preservation and inheritance of Chinese culture. In conclusion, we exited 2022 with solid performance across our business, where we made significant advancements in content and platform upgrades, refined user experience, 
push forward with monetization models and optimize costs, all together laying a solid foundation to fuel growth in revenues and profitability into 2023. As we move forward, we will remain committed to creating endless possibilities with music and technology to blaze a new trail in 2023 and in the years to come while contributing to better fulfilling our responsibilities as a key music industry player. With that, I would like to turn the call over to Shirley, our CFO, for a closer review of our financials. Thank you, Tony. Hello, everyone. Next, I'll discuss our results from financial perspective. The fourth quarter of 2022 marked another quarter to evidence our firm commitment to cost control and operating efficiency improvement with continuous growth in RFS and non-RFS profit for the fourth consecutive quarter. In Q4, RFS net profit was RMB 1.2 billion. Non-RFS net profit was RMB 1.5 billion, up by 71% year over year and by 6% sequentially. Total revenues were RMB 3.4 billion, up by 0.8% sequentially. In Q4 2022, music subscription revenues grew to RMB 2.4 billion, up by 21% year over year and by 5% sequentially. Online music paying users grew to 88.5 million, up by 16% year over year, representing a 3.2 million net ads sequentially. Mass up in Q4 was RMB 8.9, up by RMB 0.1 sequentially, and by RMB 0.4 from Q4 2021. The strong paying user and ARPPU growth were driven by more attractive member privileges, such as improved sound quality, broadened sales channels, more effective promotions, optimized content quality, and high quality services. This was also resulted from our ongoing efforts to cultivate users' willingness to pay for music and improvement in operating efficiency. Revenues from advertising continued to recover and grew sequentially as markets start to recover and relaunched new monetization models. To give our users more options, we launched a supported model and provided them more inventory which contributed to our revenue growth. With increased interest in innovation advertising channels, TME Live and TME Land became popular and have attracted many leading advertisers for music format advertising. We remain confident about the long-term growth potentials in advertising business. Social entertainment services and other revenues were RMB 3.9 billion down by 18% year over year due to the evolving macro headwinds, computations from art platforms, and a surge in COVID-19 cases in the fourth quarters of 2022. To adapt to the changing environment and to stabilize revenue skill, we continue to differentiate our content offerings by enrich our visual interactive product offerings and the cross-platform collaboration. Gross margin in Q4 was 33%, up by 4.2% year over year, and by 0.4% sequentially. The increase was primarily due to improvement of monthly ARPPU for music subscription, growth of paying users, lower revenue sharing fees for live streaming services, and improved operating cost efficiencies. Now, moving on to operating expenses. Total operating expenses <coughs> from Q4 were RMB 1.4 billion, or 18.3% of total revenues, down by 5.6% from 23.9% of total revenues in the same period last year. Selling and marketing expenses were RMB 266 million, down by 65% year over year. And this is our fourth quarter, with more than 50% cut in selling and marketing expenses on a year-over-year -year basis. 
Follow the reduced spending on youth acquisition had impacted on our MAUs. Our core music subscription services continued its rapid and health growth trajectory. We continued to closely monitor the ROI of each promotion channel, better utilize external promotion channels, and the leverage of internal traffic to attract the users and promote our brands. General and administrative expenses were on B 1.1 billion, up by 2.6% year over year. The increase was mainly due to increased investment in research and development in areas such as international footprint, on form audio, AD supported model, etc. Our effective tax rate for Q4 was 12.2% compared to 11.5% in the same period of 2021. The increase in effective tax rate was mainly because some of our entities are entitled to different tax benefits in 2021 in 2021 and 2022. For Q4, our net profit and net profit attributed to equity holders of the company were on B 1.2 billion. Non-RFS net profit and non-RFS net profit attributed to equity holders of the company reached a record high to RMB 1.5 billion and RMB 1.4 billion, respectively. Now, RFS net profit margin was 20.1%. Our base and dilute earnings per ADIS continued to grow in the fourth quarter of 2022. Base and diluted earnings per ADS were RMB 0.73 and RMB 0.72, respectively, up 121% and 125% on a year-over-year -year basis. <laughs> non rfs basic and diluted earnings per ADS were RMB 0.92 and RMB 0.91, respectively, up 80% and 82% on a year-over-year -year basis. Such results demonstrate our initial success on operating efficiency improvement, as well as the impact from share repurchase program as of December 31st, 2022, our combined balances of cash, cash equivalents, term deposits, and short-term investments were RMB 27.4 billion, as compared with RMB 25.4 billion as of September 30, 2022. The increase was due to our health operating cash flow of RMB 2.5 billion for the fourth quarter of 2022. Such combined balance was also affected by the change in the exchange rate of RMB to USD at the different balance sheet dates. Next, I'll briefly discuss our performance for four year 2022. Total revenues were RMB 28.3 billion, down 9% year over year. IFS net profit was RMB 3.8 billion. Non IFS net profit was RMB 4.9 billion up by 13% year over year. Revenues from online mail services were on 12.5 billion, up by 9% year over year, to which music subscription revenue was the largest contributor. Our music subscription business grew rapidly throughout the year with a new revenues of RMB 8.7 billion and a 19% annual growth rate. Revenues from social entertainment services declined by 20% year over year due to the changing micro headwinds, increased competition, and the impact related to COVID-19. Gross margin in 2022 was 31%, up by 0.9% year over year. The increase was primarily due to our effective control of content costs, including revenue sharing fees for live for live streaming services and improved operating cost efficiencies. Total operating expenses for 2022 were RMB 5.6 billion, down by 70% year over year. Particularly, selling and marketing expenses in 2022 decreased by 57% from 2021 as we reduced in efficient use acquisition costs and promotion activities during the year. 
Net profit and net profit attributable to equity holders of the company was RMB 3.8 billion and RMB 3.7 billion, respectively. Long RFS net profit and long RFS net profit attributable to equity holders of the company was RMB 4.9 billion and RMB 4.7 billion, respectively. Finally, I will close with some comments on Outlook for 2023. Build upon the success of effective cost and advanced controls and operational efficiency improvement in 2022. We will focus on monetization expansion and revenue growth in 2023 while keeping cost and efficiency management. Our core online music services, particularly music subscription, will continue to be our key growth driver. Paying user and monthly up are expected to continue to grow. Meanwhile, we continue to expand the suite of monetization tools, such as AD-supported model, physical elements, customized artist merchandise, super VIP, memberships, etc., and expect them to become important revenue contributors in 2023. For social and terms services, with challenges from competitions and changing macro headwinds, we expect to face pressures in keeping revenue still and will continue to invest in audio live stream and extend our international footprint for long-term growth. Furthermore, we will keep investing in high-quality contents and original content productions, as well as new products and technologies such as AIGC. We are confident about the long-term health growth of our company and the overall music industry, and remain focused on providing high-quality investment returns for our shareholders. This concludes our prepared remarks. Operator, we are ready to open the call for questions. Hello, everyone. If you are downloading by phone, please press 5 to ask a question, and then press 6 to unmute yourself. If you are accessing the call from the Tensa meeting or vault meeting application, please click the raise hand button at the bottom left. For the benefits of all participants on today's call, please limit yourself to only one question. And if you have additional questions, you can re-enter the queue. If you ask your questions in Chinese, please repeat them in English. And today's first question comes from Alicia Ya from Citigroup. Alicia, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, good evening, uh, management. Thanks for taking my questions and also congrats on the solid quarter. Um, so with PME concluding um, 2022 with improving margins and also the fundamental trends, um, I think Sherry just now also comment a little bit uh, the 2023 outlook. So if management um, can elaborate a little bit more detail in terms of um, you know, overall, what are you expecting for the online music revenue growth specifically? Uh, is there any change on your music subscriber growth target or any um, ARPPU trend that you are expecting? And also for the social entertainment, do you still expect the revenue to experience the year over year declining trend into the 2023? Thank you. Um, thank you for your question. So overall, um, we currently expect that 2023 will be a year of positive growth for both uh, top-line revenues of around mid-single digit uh, percentage, uh, as well as a bottom-line net profit uh, of around low teens percentage. Um, in addition, we expect quarterly revenue from our online music services to exceed uh, that of social entertainment services to become our primary source of revenue. Uh, at during some point within this year. Uh, this is driven by growth of both China's pro-growth uh, policies at the macro level, as well as our continued investments to strengthen uh, our operations. In, the, uh, in terms of online music, we expect subscription revenue to continue to deliver healthy growth of over 20% year over year, driven by both growth in paying users as well as ARPPU. Uh, in addition, uh, advertising, long audio, IoT services are all expected to contribute uh, meaningfully to, to the growth. In terms of social entertainment, while uh, traditional video live streaming continue to face a competitive pressure, our audio live streaming and international businesses can partially compensate 
uh, by delivering healthy growth. Uh, net net, uh, that means social entertainment is expected to see a milder rate of decline compared to last year. And combining all of the above with our continued focus on cost management to improve efficiency, uh, we currently expect net margins to also improve uh, into 2023. Thank you. Our next question comes from Alex Hun from Morgan Stanley. Alex, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Congrats, management, on very strong results. Um, my question is related to gross margin uh, trend in 2023 and maybe even longer. Um, in 22, uh, because we have music growing faster than social segment, we are still able to achieve gross margin expansion. And how sustainable is uh, this in 23, maybe even 24? Um, as music segment, uh, for now, the gross margin is still lower than the social segment and music continues to grow faster than social. So how will our gross margin profile change over the next one to two years? Thank you very much. Okay, I will talk about gross margin. Uh, gross margin uh, is 33% increase, increase by 4.2% per year over year, and increased by 0.4% sequentially. Um, there are several pos uh, positive factors on our gross margin. First, the increase of net X monthly up of music subscription and the growth of long subscriber revenue, such as digital album, artist related merchandise, long form audio revenue, will all have positive impact on our gross margin. And uh, second, decrease the efficient promotion actives and increase the content quality of performance. Revenue sharing ratio of live streaming have been controlled and decreased on year over year base. And third, we increased RC requirement of content cost and optimized model of RC. We restructured the agreements with some music labels, tried to switch MG model to revenue sharing model or got more reasonable MG and we have the positive feedback. And the fourth, the optimized the technology and the operation strategy related to brand and the storage capability and the improved utilization of our service and equipment. Our operational cost decreased on a year over year based on the sequential aid. While the decrease of social entertainment revenue and the change of revenue mix in social entertainment revenue has the negative impact on gross margin. Looking forward to 2023, um, all these uh, positive factors will be continued and the negative factors also can also be continued. We will continue to expand the suite of monetization tools such as AD supported advertisement, artist related merchandise, super VIP membership, and we expect our online mix revenue will keep helps growth. Uh, so we will continue to focus, uh, to focus on increased efficiency of all business units and tighten all cost terms control in 2023. So we expect our gross margin will be increased on year over year base in 2023. Thank you. And our next question from Lincoln Kong from Goldman Sachs. Lincoln, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, thank you, management. Uh, you, you know, congrats on the uh, good result. Uh, my question is on the advertising business. Um, you know, how do we see so far, uh, let's say year to day, the uh, you know, advertising demand recovery uh, for us? And uh, we talk about uh, this uh, ad support, uh, you know, model. Um, so, in terms of the new format of ads or in creating more ad inventory, uh, how do we think about our progress here? Uh, especially uh, how to better monetize our, you know, big MAU uh, in 2023. Uh, what's our, you know, uh, outlook here? Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, you know, we continue to see a recovery in the advertising revenues, um, especially following the reopening uh, post-COVID. Uh, the splash screen ad continued to recover at a healthy pace. 
Um, in addition to that, uh, ad-supported mode advertising continue to ramp up uh, and currently account uh, for roughly about mid-teens percentage of the uh, advertising revenue. Um, and then thirdly, in terms of sponsorship advertising, um, while during the fourth quarter it temporarily weakened due to COVID, um, you know, we do expect with the reopening there to be many more uh, live events um, and as a result, advertising, uh, uh, sponsorship advertising opportunities. So all in all, um, we do expect uh, this year to be a, a strong recovery year and uh, a, a year of positive growth for the ad business. And then in terms of verticals, uh, in the fourth quarter, we, you know, given the uh, e-commerce uh, seasonality, we did saw uh, an, uh, 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 you know, a meaningful increase in the e-commerce vertical. And then in addition to that, uh, Internet services in general, uh, food and beverages, consumer electronics, as well as local services are also verticals where we saw continued uh, demand from advertisers. Thank you. And our next question comes from Lei Zhang from Bank of America Securities. Lei Zhang, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, hi, management. Uh, thanks for taking my question and congrats on the solid results. Uh, my question is mainly regarding your sales marketing and investment plan in uh, 2023. Uh, since we have a pretty good cost control last year, so uh, can you give us more color for 2023? Thank you. Okay. About the uh, selling and the promotion expenses, um, <coughs> Um, we have uh, taken tight control to on saving and marketing expenses in Q4 continuously and uh, resulting in a 65% decrease on a year over year base. And uh, uh, we balanced the MAUs and the monetization when evaluating the uh, healthiness of business. We focus more on measures such as level of user engagement user retention rate and paying users. Uh, we will further monitor ROI of each promotion channel and manage the internal and the external resources more effectively, improve efficiency of selling and marketing expenses in the future. In 2023, uh, selling and promotion expenses will be operated at a very low level and uh, will be continue to decrease on year-over-year -year basis but the cutting degree will be uh, limited compared to uh, those in 2022. And in the 2023, uh, we will uh, uh, invest in the content promotion. So that will uh, be a, a, new, a new way for our uh, upgrading uh, our MNUs. Yeah. Thank you. And our next question comes from Wei Xiong from UBS. Wei Xiong, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Um, hi, good evening, management. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I want to get some of your thoughts around AIGC. Um, as management mentioned, uh, we are exploring possibilities and leveraging technology in that area. So how do we assess TME's um, strategic positioning around AIGC? Um, what are some of the potential benefits and business opportunities that we plan to pursue this year? And uh, what could be the potential investment or cost implications related to that? Thank you. Thank you. 我们目前也正刚刚也不是刚就是我们其实一直在呃投入到这种就首先是跟 啊，这些应用包包括我们说，我们可能会有一些，呃，我们在啊推荐歌曲上，我们会考虑使用对话式的呃歌曲推荐。啊，我们在创建歌单的时候，也可能会去使用这样的一个模式啊，来增加人机的
，呃，包括我们在鸽子海报上，呃，我们正在做音乐贺卡这这些音乐贺卡这部分，这些都得到比较好的一个应用了。啊、呃，所以在未来这一年里面，我们我们会比较大力可能去投入一个自研的一个 L M 这个大语言模型。呃，我们通过一些通过自己的一个一个研发投入，呃，在这样的一个领域里面，能够这样能驱动我们在后续的呃，基于跟音乐紧密相关的呃对话对话式以及图片视频这样的呃生成领域，包括音乐啊、呃，包括我们对于现在目前歌曲。啊，现在我们也，因为我们也可以看到，现在越来越多的大模型在用于，呃，音乐的生成，来减少音乐人创作的门槛。所以，我们总结来说，我们目前做这样的一个，呃，体验是，呃，使用这个 L M 最终最重要的这样一个核心逻辑是去降低我们目前的很多环节上的门槛，因为它其实并没有影响，呃，没有，并没有影响创意。通过这样去提升效率、降低门槛，我们可以寄希望于说未来的。这样的一个通过 AI 所生成的内容，在我们实际的运营的这样的一个功能里面得到更非常充分的应用。Um, we've always invested in AI,、um, in particular recently with a focus in LLM,、uh, large language models.、Uh, clearly, that will lead to more applications.、Uh, we'll continue to leverage partnerships with Tencent.、Um, examples of our applications would include recommendation as well as playlist in a more conversational、uh, setting. Um, other examples would include music posters, greeting cards, synth synthetic voice,、uh, all of which are already currently being uh, applied uh, to our platform.、Um, into 2023, we'll invest in our own、uh, R&D in LLM、um, to drive music-related conversational、uh, applications,、uh, and also to help musicians dramatically reduce the barrier to their creativity. And overall,、uh, that should result in More creativity and higher quality、uh, content,、uh, which is good for the overall industry. Thank you. And our next question comes from Xue Xuecheng Zhang from CICC. Xuecheng, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my question and、uh, just a、uh, follow up on a pool of milk subscription business.、Uh, we noticed that the pool from milk side continue to improve this quarter. And、uh, how does management think about the pool momentum in the first quarter and uh, uh, in 2023?、Uh, you mentioned in the prepare remarks it may be driven by optimized content quality,、uh, more attractive member privileges,、uh, more sales channels, and、uh, more effective. Promotions. So, could you give us more cards on this way?、Yeah, thank you. Well, the short answer is yes. We do expect the ARPU to continue to improve,、um, driven by all the things that、uh, we mentioned. So, a combination of、uh, continued improvement in the quality of our、uh, membership offering,、uh, the quality and the uh, uh, comprehensiveness of the privileges in our membership.、Um, You know more broadened sale channels,、uh, which include internal kind of within platform channels as well as external, outside、uh, of our platform channels,、um, uh, as well as、uh, more effective promotions.、Um, you know, and by more effective promotions,、uh, obviously that would lead to a higher ROI when we do engage in、uh, promotions, which、uh, are helpful to to ARP. Thank you. And our next question comes from Thomas Chong from Jefferies. Thomas, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi. Good evening. Ah,、uh, thanks, management, ah,、uh, for taking my questions and congratulations on a solid set of result. Ah,、uh, my question is about ah、uh, the competitive ah、uh, landscape. Um, given that ah.、Uh, In terms of、uh, the sales and marketing、uh, spending and、uh, margin、uh, improvement,、um, are we seeing the competitive、uh, landscape、uh, more stabilized and、uh, there's less、uh, threat from the short form video? And my second question is about、uh, online music services、uh, surpassing social entertainment、uh, at some point for this year. I just want to get some color with regard to the long term、uh, revenue mix. Uh, how should we think about、uh, online music services、uh, revenue contribution、uh, in the long term? Thank you. I'll, I'll tackle the second part first about the、uh, revenue mix.、Um, as uh, we mentioned,、uh, you know we do expect the、uh, music online music services revenue to surpass 
uh, social entertainment. Uh, and so clearly what that would mean over the long run, and we expect that to continue in to the long run. So uh, we do expect the online music services to be the primary revenue source uh, going forward, um, as opposed to being a one-off uh, uh, effect. Within online music services, um, obviously in the fourth quarter, you've seen that, uh, you know, music subscription grow uh, uh, just north of 20%. And then non-subscription revenue grow at a faster pace than that, um, primarily due to the low base uh, in 2021. And then looking into 2023, um, we uh, obviously think uh, you know that the the, uh, the effects would be slightly different. Um, music subscription would grow at over 20 percent on a year-over-year basis, uh, as, as I mentioned. Um, and then non-subscription revenue. Uh, you know, we will see pockets of growth in the areas of uh, advertising, uh, which is growing very well, uh, long audio, IoT services, uh, but somewhat offset it by uh, volatility in digital album uh, as well as sublicensing. Thank you. And our next question. Sorry. And also uh, with the unique platform and content strategy of TME, TME is now starting to have some monetization for the content productions. Uh, content licensing and also advertising sponsorship with our live event as well. And also, as you mentioned, that we started to have some artist related merchandising revenue, which can help us to uh, um, explore further e-commerce opportunities. Those will also help us to be some new revenue stream in the future. Okay, thank you. And our next question from Charlene Liu from HSBC. Charlene, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. I have two questions. Um, first, can you share your expectations for subscriber, bo- uh, sub- subscriber growth for paid music? And how should we think about impact from resumption of offline entertainment versus willingness to pay as macro recovers post reopening? That's the first question. Um, separately on gross profit margin, I think management had mentioned that it still has room to improve yeah. further. Uh, what could be a midterm target uh, for GPM? And uh, and also, I think kind of subset to that question is how would investment into LM impact us from a P&L standpoint? Thank you so much. Um, I'll take the first part on the subscriber growth, and perhaps Shirley can add a bit of comments around gross margin. Um, you know, our, our subscriber growth has been following a secular trend. Um, so irrespective of uh, uh, COVID, irrespective of reopening, we continue to see a secular trend behind the subscriber growth. Um, our focus is m- much more on subscription revenue as a whole, uh, which is driven by both paying user growth as well as ARPPU. Um and Baron, you mentioned offline uh, and more offline activities. Um, I think bear in mind that uh, that also benefit us uh, in the form of advertising uh, monetization, as Kashin mentioned, because uh, we organize uh, a vast number of offline music events and we generate uh, a meaningful amount of sponsorship uh, advertising revenue as a result. Um, during the fourth quarter, um, that part of the business actually saw some temporary impact because of, of COVID. Now, with the f- uh, reopening and with more offline activities, we actually expect uh, there to be a positive uh, impact uh, to the sponsorship advertising revenue a- as a result. So that would help uh, act as a second growth driver to our online music uh, revenue uh, in addition to subscription. And the... Uh... About the gross margin of music, uh, we believe we can have uh, uh, the same uh, gross margin rate uh, about uh, came to the uh, Spotify. And uh, for the over, uh, over gross margin of our company, we believe uh, in 2023, our gross margin will be increased uh, and higher than natural in the 2022. And in the uh, long term uh, gross margin, our target will be 30 Five percent. That is uh, mentioned in our IPOs. Yeah. Thank you. And we will take our last question today from Xue Qing Zhang from CICC. Xue Qing, your line is open. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. 
Hey, thanks for another question and uh, one more question on labels co cooperation. And today we announced that TME reached an agreement with GVR and B Music. Uh, so can management give us more color on the future chain on labels collaboration and uh, how does it affect our growth margin? Thank you. Oh well, yeah, um, TME is the preferred partners uh, for many music labels and artists domestically and also internationally. Um, we insist to protect the IP right and to try our best and deep to drive the healthy development of the Chinese music industry. So currently, um, we provide the most comprehensive music library and also the best coverage of music content for users in China. Um, I think that in the continuing in a long-term relationship, we will continue to work with the music labels in content co-productions and also uh, with our leading music, um, with our new technologies that can help us to do the promotions um, of the music in a better manner. Um, besides, we are also focusing on some of the live events. As the Chinese market is now reopened, we are seeing that there's a lot of live event opportunity coming up. Um, so for TME Live, um, that we are doing extremely good quality of um, music shows in last year. Most of them are online, but this year we are going to have more offline events. Uh, in partners with our music labels partners. And uh, we are expecting that we can have more shows like the top tier artist concerts, um, music festivals, and also some live house events as well. So uh, I think that we have demonstrated a really good long-term partnership with most of the music labels all over the world. And we are the trustworthy and also the people partners of them. So we have expected to have more in that cooperation the coming in the future. Thank you. We are approaching the end of the conference call. I will now turn over the call to our host, Mr. Tony Yap, for closing remarks. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. If you do have further questions, please feel free to contact our IR team. This concludes today's call. Thank you and talk to you next time.